It's a dream come true and you've made it as a professional footballer. But what do you do when it's all over? I was in football, fortunately, uh, and I stayed in football. I got sacked at Chesterfield and then I was taken in at, into Leeds by Howard Wilkinson to, to head up the youth development programme. And I think at that point, I got my head round, no playing. I had a life and I, and I think, you know, I got stuck into coaching, uh, managing, whatever. Uh, I got I really got into it at Leeds. There's limited jobs. Um, I mean, I found that this summer myself, um, you know, I lost my job at Leeds because of the new owner coming in. Um, I thought to myself, I, I might not get back in and, uh, you know, spoke to a few people I knew and volunteered to do some coaching sessions, but it's tough. Uh, there's not that many jobs. Um, it's a tough, you know, market to get into really. You know, there's not, there's not too many coaching jobs knocking about. Um, so it, it is hard to get back into football, yeah. Don't get me wrong, maybe we should ring the PFA and say, listen, I need some help, I want to get on a course. But when you finish playing football, that all costs money. And sometimes if you play at the lower levels or whatever level you play at, and your money might have lost your money gambling or through whatever, with divorce or whatever it might be, you might not have the money to pay for courses now. You know, to, 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 be, to be a coach nowadays, to get through your coaching badges, is quite expensive, you know, to get to, to, you know, to get to be a manager. So some players might think, well, I haven't got the extra so many thousand pounds to become a coach, you know, or, or whatever. So they may be looking for a different route. It's a, diff it's a real difficult point in your life because you, you think to yourself, I probably haven't earned enough money for the rest of my life. I've got kids, I've got school fees to pay for, I've got responsibilities. You want to kind of try and keep a little bit of the same lifestyle as you were as a footballer. Um, so it's trying to work out that probably that middle ground where you can maybe get a little bit of both. And it's a real tough time. And I, you know, I'm speaking because I know I, I've been there. You know, everyone sees you've got a bar in the city centre. You know, you're out and about. You know, I don't always have it good. You know, I have a lot of bad times as well, like any other person does in life. And you know, you have to battle on. Paul Hart had the locks of a Greek god when he played for Leeds. As a retired centre half, he returned to the club as a youth coach under Howard Wilkinson and won the FA Youth Cup not once, but twice. So what happened to the best defender never to be capped by England? I broke my leg when I was 34. It was a bad break, double compound, on my first game at Birmingham. And shortly afterwards, I got asked if I would like to be player coach at Notts County, funny enough. And I thought with the break, I wasn't sure how soon I'd get back and all that. I thought, well, this is a good opportunity for me to take and I think I should step that way. So I took on the role of uh, player, man player coach at uh, Notts County. But I didn't realise how much not playing. I, didn't, I played 26 games in the first season, but it was killing me. I, I didn't really, because of the, the broken leg, I wasn't quite satisfy myself with the performances and I had a I, I think I had a bad time at that point in terms of coming to terms with not playing football because I felt I could have played on till I was 38 39 and uh, I was certainly fit enough um, so I had trouble getting my head around it I became manager then at Chesterfield and all that sort of stuff but it was um, it was a nuisance to me for a few years I've got to be honest from the minute I walked into Leeds again, I just loved it. And fortunately, I had all these players, these wonderful young players that came through at that point. And I just had complete and utter satisfaction. It was amazing. And I was, I was, I was all right then, you know. I got over the football, playing football a bit. I, I came in five years into the 10 year plan and uh, it's amazing, you know, me, Eddie Beagle and Pete Gumby, <laughs> with a, that's what, that was it. And we, uh, you know, we, we recruited well, eventually. The, winning the FA Youth Cup in 92, 93, helped us get into parents' homes and, and convinced people that uh, Leeds United was, was the place to be. Uh, and it took another three or four years, you know, within that we got, uh, Ian Hart and Andy Gray through and all that, but then we became more prolific in 95. So it took us four years to get there, but we were, you know, we got to where we wanted to be, I think. 
Well, it set me up. I went to Nottingham Forest as an academy manager, but ultimately uh, became manager manager there. Um, but it was, um, and I played all the young kids that we produced at Nottingham Forest. I played them in the first team. So fortunately at Leeds, you know, that same group of players ended up being European Cup semi-finalists and finishing fourth in the league or something like that. And it was, a f I, I took, I didn't take any pride in that. It's wrong to say that because, it, you know, I really enjoyed watching them. I went to, uh, I went to, to watch them play Lazio in the European Cup in uh, 2000 or something like that. And I saw them all there. Alan Smith, I think, scored a goal. They were all there playing. It was fantastic for me to see them, you know, who I'd known, you know, Alan, Alan Smith since he was 10, boys since they were 13, 14, 15, you know, it was just a fantastic sight. Yeah, so, here we are. I signed there as um, the record signing. <laughs> and uh, I walked into the dressing room uh, and it was, I was the only non-international in the dressing room. And I, they'd paid the most money they'd ever paid for a play. It was hard to come to terms with, I've got to admit. And I struggled a bit for, for quite a few months. But the, the players were fantastic. Tony Curry, Eddie Gray, Trevor Cherry, Paul Maidley looked after me so well. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I, I don't know. Whatever I achieved at Leeds, you know, was down to them. And the supporters showed a lot of faith in me. And uh, I'll never forget that experience it was absolutely amazing what what a club people i don't i don't know these days whether people realize how big leeds united is and what it means you know to be at leeds united it's massive you know and it's you know when you walk out to to that to that song you know and all, all the crowd is singing it and you know and they want to win you know nothing matters more than winning it's an amazing feeling, you know, and uh, I've never forgotten it. There's one, there's a couple of games that stand out, and one was at Southampton in the semi-final, uh, where I think we lost 2-1 in the semi-final. Second leg, we were 2-0 up in the first leg, and they got back to 2-2, and we went down there. And I remember, as a back four, I remember us being 15 yards into their half, defending. We were we put them under so much pressure and couldn't couldn't get the win, and uh, we absolutely pummeled them to no avail. And um, but my I looked round and Paul Madeley was here, and and and, uh, and we were we were we were so far into their half it was amazing. But I you know I I uh, oh god there are some great memories you know some. Terrific performances in, in there. We went to uh, in the League Cup that year. We we played West Brom three times, played them away, played them at home, two draws, and then eventually beat them. And I scored the winner at Main Road in in the in the final game. And playing against Cyril Regis, you know, who was a beast of a man, you know, and uh, and getting the better of him ultimately, you know, but. Um, Great memories, but you know, driven on by a crowd that you know is, is totally behind you. It's fantastic. I played with a lot of the lads that came through with uh, Don Revy, and uh, and they told me about him. You know, they told me about what it was like to be there. Oh, it was definite legacy and definitely a massive influence on on them. You know, when when he he, he brought together a whole group of young players, didn't he, and put them in 64 or something, 63, 64. No, no, they explained it to me. I understood it after that. The case with me, I think I had a, a pretty good career. Well, I had a very enjoyable career. I enjoyed it. I'm not sure everybody else did, but I certainly did. Uh, and, um, and I thought, um, I look back and I think I don't have many regrets about the way I was brought up and uh, the moves I made and things like that. I was a very fortunate person uh, with the ability that I had to to have played amongst some wonderful footballers, and uh, I, I don't think any 
anybody owes me anything. I think it's a real difficult time for any sportsman, whether it's football, you know, any, any sport. But for me, it's, it's a life-changing experience. I think for the first two years, being honest, I kind of was in a bit of a daze. I didn't know really what to do with myself. You know, it's, it's all you know is football. All you know is getting up, getting into your car, driving down whichever motorway it may be, get to your training ground, have your breakfast and go training. And um, I missed it so much and you can never replace that. I think the most difficult thing for me was coming to terms with uh, not being able to play again. Um, for me personally, it was injury. I had some discs removed from my back and replaced. So it was, uh, I was basically told to stop playing which I thought I could obviously keep playing. Tried to train a little bit more at Stoke at the time and it just wasn't right. My back was bad, my injury was, was too bad and, and the surgeon was saying to me basically if you don't stop playing it's going to affect you in later life. So I had to think about the family, the kids etc and um, made the decision to call it a day.